conceptual people talk about all of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. funds if you believe in the work we do if you can uh, look into all the things we've done if you follow me for a long time you know what I do you know what I stand for you know what I am constantly engaged in some of you have top tapped into our resources some of you have called us in time of me we need your support we need you to push we're trying to close out the year with ten thousand um, dollars will we hit that uh, I'm not going to speak on it. I'm going to let the actions of the people speak for itself. Uh, but here's that. So instead of talking about that right now, I'm going to venture off on it. I've been really pushing, but I'm going to venture off. I want to talk about something that we really should be a focus on. Again, my focus is always going to be on, okay, what's the problem? What's the solution? How are we losing? And how do we take how, the understanding of how we are losing and start winning? Well, everybody knows that's got a cell phone and is on social media knows that Kyrie got himself into some heat. Well, he stays into it because he tends to move and walk and uh, operate, uh, you know, from the beat of his own drum. And he doesn't always just go because he's told to go. He thinks on his own and he makes decisions on his own. Um, and a lot of people are still mad because he didn't get poked. But we moved on, sort of. Um, and I'm going to get into all this stuff over the next several months. So it's going to be a lot of people hot at me because I'm about to point out some things that hopefully are going to jar some people, but it's also going to bring some things to light that we really need to see. So anyway, Kyrie says some things. Well, no, he doesn't. He posts a link to a book or a documentary that's associated with a book and it's about black Hebrews basically uh, you know Hebrew Israelites uh, the, what is believed by many to be the origin of the Hebrew nation and a bunch of other stuff and it was this particular documentary was deemed to be anti-Semitic and not so much its claim to African origin, but in its view of European Jews specifically. And I'm not gonna get into the details because it's not what it's about, but basically Kyrie caught heat and for the longest he wouldn't back off of it. 
and he insisted that he could not be anti-Semitic. And what they didn't get or what they refused to get or what they ignored purposely was his assessment or assertion that he could not be anti-Semitic is because in his mind he was a Semite. Uh, and you can't be a Semite and pro-self and be anti-Semitic. Uh, but this, and he was also making the suggestion that claiming my place doesn't make me a hate hater or hate mom. And so anyway, ultimately they push him. He makes a, an apology that in my opinion still gets around him uh, saying what he has to feel about the whole thing. But he's, he does it. He gets back in after being suspended so many games and uh, he, he hasn't addressed it since. But uh, during the process of going through this, Nike ceremoniously dropped him. Um, you know, and that's what happens. That's where we're at now. If a person stands on something and a group isn't happy with it and it has some appearance to a, a PR nightmare, companies aren't sticking with you. They're dropping you. They're tossing you away and whatever. Well, as it seems, as it appears, there are a number of shoe companies in line to get deals with uh, Kyrie, uh, most notably Adidas and Puma, which are owned by two German brothers. Now, what's interesting is Adidas got off of their contract with Kanye West for somewhat of the same thing, anti-Semitic comments, but are they're in line to cut a deal with Kyrie. Just, just something to pay attention to. This is, has nothing to do with standards. It has nothing to do with taking a stand. This is about money to these people. This is capitalism. This is about money. Uh, for Adidas dealing with Kanye at the time meant long-term losses to them. So they broke that. They broke uh, their connection with Kanye, but they're looking at Kyrie and saying, oh, Kyrie's clean enough now that we can go in on the back end of this and make money off of him. He's still a household name. He still has brand appeal and the kids love him and we can take it, we can do this. But here's where it gets real interesting. A young brother by the name of Devlin Carter, who owns the SIA Collective, which is a custom, custom shoe design, uh, business. He's been doing well. He's out there. If you're into custom shoes and you want to spend a you know, significant amount of money on a, a pair of sneaks, you've probably heard of him. There's another cat that uh, owns and operates Nagash, who I've actually purchased shoes from. Um, and, you know, there's some brands out there, some fashion brands that are out there that are black on total carry. Um, you know, I've gotten some bags from uh, Thank You Tote and Carry. Uh, but anyway, look. So now, Devlin Carter, the owner of SIA Collective, uh, is in negotiations with Kyrie Irving. And he's pitching him on ownership. So this is not an endorsement deal. Kanye is going to actually buy in and own his own brand of shoe that will be designed and in some ways probably distribution will be handled in some way uh, through a channel uh, that is connected or that, that uh, Devlin is already familiar with or working on. So there are a lot of different things that you have to understand when you start talking about getting into business and being competitive against some major hitters. Uh, design product quality and all that stuff is one thing i think that we can design things to be better i think that we can create things with a higher quality what we lack is distribution we see that in the music industry we see it in books uh one of the biggest challenges i've had is distribution and promotion it cost and you have to be in the right channel you know in the right frame you have to right have uh access to uh, the money to do it and I'm talking millions uh, to be able to compete against people who are pushing their books through major houses uh, and having major distribution deals and a bunch of other stuff that they can negotiate uh, for a number of different reasons. I don't want to get off into all of that. I want to kind of stay on, stay on point here. So, the, so here we go. So now here's the thing. This is where the power play comes in. What a lot of people don't realize is that when Kobe retired and he 
uh, launched Mamba Mamba Sports Academy and Mamba Sports and and you know the big push was Mamba mentality and he went on this tour where he was doing these lectures and these interviews and he was reestablishing his brand he was building it wasn't simply as some second one-off thing one of the things he was doing was preparing to cut ties with Nike and start his own shoe company uh, he wanted 100% complete ownership and control. He was going to manage and create distribution uh, through some distribution deal. I'm not sure who the distribution deal will be. be. Now, the distribution deal can be through one of those companies if you wanted to, or you can create a distribution channel of your own. What we're talking about now is vertical group economics or vertical singular economics. In other words, I want to own it. I want to manufacture it. I want to distribute it. What happens then? Nobody can price me out. I control the price points. I control manufacturing costs. I control distribution costs. I control the final point, price point. I control branding. I control marketing. I control how my product will be delivered, presented, and represented. Now that's power. The thing is, for so long, black athletes have been programmed that the deal is to get the great endorsement deal. You know, everybody wants the deal that's as close to what Michael Jordan got. Everybody's trying to be the next Jordan as far as creating a brand of shoes that puts them in the billion dollar status. And what they don't understand is that was this, this transition that went along with that. For the most part, Nike owned the Jordan brand. And then Jordan bought the Jordan brand for a while and then end up, if I'm not mistaken, sold that brand back to Nike. Nike now still owns or re, has repurchased the Jordan brand. So the vast majority of the money we spend on Jordan still goes to Nike, still goes to a white owned company. And one would argue even when Mike had it, it wasn't benefiting the black community. So here's, here, here's where Kyrie comes in. Kyrie comes in and Kyrie is definitely conscious minded in the sense of his awareness of self which means he's aware of his people which means that he wants to promote and build his people means that he has literally put his money where his mouth is i have seen him donate money to different people on an individual level and do things on a collective level that is absolutely specifically aimed at helping black people i've seen this with my own eyes i've seen uh, him pay for somebody's school. I see him pay for somebody's hospital bill. I've seen him do a couple of things. Just show up on their GoFundMe and give and bounce. Now, obviously, because he didn't do it anonymously, he wanted people to know he give, but it doesn't mean that he's grandstanding or he's, you know, caping for attention. What he's doing, he's showing other people what they need to be doing. You know, he, he's not asking for interviews for it. He's not, but he's sitting up saying, hey, this is how we need to do it. We need to get out for our own. Well, here's what happens when just one ball player like Kyrie Irving says, I don't want an endorsement deal anymore. I want to own the brand. Now, I've got people who have been buying my shoes already, so I have a following. Now, I'm also going to be creating a message. I'm also going to be sending a message. I'm creating a paradigm and a business model. I'm going to show other guys how to do it. And what's going to e eventually happen is we're going to start to see if we can make this happen, if this actually happens. But you got to see the beginning. You got to be able to see the vision before you can actually manifest it, before you can bring it into reality. One of the things I tell people all the time, um, the power of ownership is so much more than the money amount in your bank account. Um, I've been blessed to see astronomical figures in my bank account. I've had some very rough times. I can tell you now that I'm nowhere near where I've been. But what I can tell you is, as an independent business owner, a person who is in control of my business uh, enterprises, that at a time when I am having major growing pains so there's not a whole lot of cash flow but there's a lot of business I'm still doing better than 95% of people based off of statistics and uh, income medians now this isn't being braggadocious I'm, tr I'm trying to get you to understand something to me what I see as so much growth needed and, 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 and a need to be at another level Somebody else is saying, man, I just wish I had it because 
I control how I move. I'm in control. Of my, I don't have to ask anybody for time off. I don't have to ask anybody to put spend time with my daughter. I don't have to ask anybody, can I do it this way? Now, does that come with a great deal of responsibility? Does that come with... As soon as I finish this video, I'm going to deal with you. Leave them people alone and go inside. No, I'm, I'm getting ready to come out. I'm doing a video. I'll be in there in a minute. Um, but look, this is this thing that, that we have to understand ownership. There's so much more to ownership than just dollar amount. The dollar amounts come, but you have to lay the foundation. And that's the thing we don't want. We get caught up in dollar amounts. That's how we get bowed out in the music industry. That's how they basically totally took over hip hop and rap music. We got greedy. We got the dollar. We gave up ownership, which is control. Now, let me give you an idea of how this works. The Rockefellers are one of the wealthiest families on the planet. And John Rockefeller, if you take his net worth at the time he was alive and you make room for inflation and everything else that, that has transpired, he's still the most wealthiest man to ever be in America. He it would be worth almost $400 billion. If you will convert it based on all of the mathematical factors that converts what, what he owned in the middle of the 1800s on up to his death to now. And his offspring, Nelson Rockefeller, once said that the goal is to own nothing and control everything. Well, you want to own it. You don't necessarily want it in your name where it's easy target. You want to control it. And that's what ownership provides at the level we're talking. Do we want to get to a point where we're talking about business trusts and uh, incorporated uh, mechanisms? Absolutely, because that's how you protect what you build. But the first thing you have to do is get ownership. You've got to be able to say, I control it because if I don't control it, they can do exactly what they did to Kyrie. They can do exactly what they did to Kanye. Just like that, other people made choices that took Kanye from billionaire status. So even being a billionaire and having all this stuff and this means absolutely nothing when you don't control the final outcome when other people talk. Now, obviously, as a person who does business, my business is dependent on who is willing to spend money with me, who's willing to buy, who sees value in dealing with all that. You've got to manage that. You've got to build that. You've got to create that. You've got to drive that. That's actually something that you have to do. But at the end of the day, you got to sit up and say, okay, do I have something? If you have something with value, if you're solving a problem, if you're providing something that's in high demand, you will eat. Now, the level you will eat is going to determine on how well you run it, how well uh, you connect, and how consistent and persistent you are. If you are a quitter, you are going to be forced to quit. Trust me. But if you are a winner, you're going to push through those difficult moments. You're going to find the answers to the problems you're facing, and you're going to elevate yourself. This is the thing that we've got to get better at. Kobe had, and if you remember, right after Kobe's death, Vanessa, his wife, had made a move and said she was going to sever ties with Nike. And nobody couldn't understand it. Everybody was like, don't do it. Don't. What she was doing, she knew. They had obviously had conversations. She knew what his ultimate goal was. I think what happened was she didn't have the business acumen. And I don't want to say she's not a business person. What I'm saying is Kobe had a mentality that was off the chain. You had to actually talk to this dude. He had a mentality that was off the chain. He was so much more than a basketball player. He was a thinker. And he was the brand. So Kobe had the confidence that I can do this just with my name. I can say it and it'll happen. I don't think Vanessa had that confidence that I can be the force that Kobe was in getting this done. I think that she may have had some understanding and I don't think she knew who she could con connect with or who she could trust. So she wanted to keep the force and the name Mumba mentality alive. She wanted to push it and maybe in five or six years she can sit up and she can re renegotiate or she can walk away or whatever. But I guarantee you that that 
initial move to sever ties with Nike was because that's what Kobe was planning on doing. Kobe had made up in his mind that he was going to build something great. Now, Devlin Carter is bringing the same idea to Kyrie, and Kyrie is at the table, and I really hope that these two guys are able to work it out because it's so much bigger than Kyrie. It's so much bigger than Devlin. It's so much bigger than a shoe deal. It's a paradigm. It's a business model. It's, a, it's an empowerment model. It's something that we need to be looking at. We need to teach it. One of the things I teach at Black Men League one of the 11 principles of black manhood is business ownership. One of the ways that black men have been emasculated is in being made the most underpaid and underemployed and unemployed uh, group in America. We're not gonna give you the capacity to provide. We're not gonna give you the capacity to support a family. We're not gonna give you the capacity. We're gonna commodify you and then we're going to take away your means of earning it. We're going to say that all a man is, is what he's able to do as far as what he's able to pay for. Then we're not going to give you the capacity to pay for anything. We are going to emasculate you in the, in the space of your own existence in your community, with your women, with your children, with everyone else. We're going to have you fighting for crumbs. We're going to have you stepping on each other, kicking each other, knocking each other down so that you can be that one person out of 100 or 200 or 300 or 400 or whatever, whatever it ends up being that actually has enough money to move around. You know, that half a percent of professional athletes that everybody's, uh, you know, idolizing. Um, despite so many things that need to be corrected, uh, that 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 six percent of six figures earn it, six figure earners, six percent of black men earn six figures, but everybody's paying all the bills. Now you can make less than six figures. You got the median income, median median earning income for a black man is forty four thousand. Forty four thousand a year is median. Um, now. What does that mean? That means that a lot more men are making less than that. Now, there's some men making more, but we're talking about the median at 44,000, significantly lower than whites and Asians and Arabs. Uh, and yet, the pressure is on us to pay all the bills. Or we're not a man. You're not a real man if you don't pay all the bills. So you've been highly commodified. And then you've been stripped of the ability and the capacity to do so, no matter how well educated you are. Matter of fact, um, a black man with a bachelor's degree earns less than a white man with a high school diploma. And it's by design. But when you own it, you can sit up and you can control it. And, and I'm real big on vertical economics. We need to control retail. We need to control distribution and we need to control manufacturing. We need to control uh, product development, product research. We need to control it all. It needs to be in our hands. We need to be in control of it and we need to build it not only for us, we need to build it for them. One of the ways that they have kept us at bay economically is they are constantly selling us their stuff and we are buying it. So they come in and they rape our community of our funds because we freely give it to them because we buy it. We buy more Mercedes Benz than white people even though they are 10 times more wealthy in median household income. Yes, we buy double the amount of Mercedes as white people, yet white people are 10 times more wealthy. And they keep doing that. We need to have products that they want. If they want the best, they got to come to us to get it because we, we build it better. We do it better. We need to do that to them. We need to be able to have some things where we service ourselves, help ourselves. But your wealth is going to come from driving people out of their enclave, out of their markets, out of their spheres, and making them move laterally into your economy to purchase things that they need and the things they want because we are doing it that way. That's got to be something, and we have the capacity. We know it. Hell, most of the ideas are ours anyway. This is something that we've got to learn. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, I'm going to be coming back, and we're going to be talking about Tiffany Cross and watching how they're doing her. We're going uh, to talk about some other, other things. Where in the hell is Kanye? Uh, I'm really reevaluating some of the things that I am observing on Candace Owens. So we're going to talk about that. Um, what I disagree with with her, I disagree with. That hasn't changed. So I don't want the people start thinking. But 
there are some things I'm hearing that I think need to be conversations. And the only person bold enough to say it seems to be her. Everybody else is too worried about pissing people off. So they're saying what needs to be said what, what, to keep them in the right place. Nobody is bold enough to call a spade a spade. And so that's got to be the thing. We've got to speak truth. We talk about truth to power, but we don't speak it. So I'm going to keep speaking it. Uh, I don't know what it looks like in the future, but I'm going to keep speaking it. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Again, I'm about to get out of here. Show some love. Show some support. Support the black uh, black men lead. Write a passes initiative. Support the Odyssey Project in general. Support the black voice. All of these things are mechanisms within our community that are set for empowerment. If you believe in the work I'm doing, show some love. The, the links are going to be in the description box. Show some love. On that note, I'm out here.